Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon or good evening. I just wanted to make a short video about program competences or program management competences because it's an area that can seem to be a little bit confusing. Is it the same as project management? Is it is it different? How is it different? So here is a short video with at least my take on it. Very personal perspective, but it's my take on program management competences. Okay, first of all, before we start, I really want to highlight a very helpful and useful tool. And this is the fact that PM for NGOs has a competency assessment or a, or a competency check, if you like. It's on the website and you can see the URL on the screen. You can download it. It's simple. It's in Excel and it goes through the Project Depro competencies and it adds on some competencies for program management as well. OK, so that's the advert. It is really useful. You can give it to your teams as well. You know, so it's not just something for you. So do please feel free to share it. OK, um, as I said, it also covers Project Depro because there's nothing radically different. It's not as if we're doing something totally different from project management, not at all. So the competency assessment is going to be really useful. I think it's also helpful you know, to, you know, to keep an eye on this. Now, nobody is going to be good at everything. That's, it's silly to expect that. But if you are aware of your strengths and weaknesses, you can start looking for ways to compensate, whether it's your own skills development or bringing in more, more expertise and more experience. OK, so let's have a look at you know, the, one of the areas of difference. And this is the discipline. So when you look at this and the principles, principles and disciplines are our, I think, main areas of difference. Now, clearly, part of this is because a program manager is looking at a more strategic level. So if we look at something like stakeholder management, well, clearly there are going to be more stakeholders across a program than in a project. In addition, the program manager may also have to help project managers with their stakeholder management and so on. One area that I think is useful to think about when we look at the disciplines of justification, time management, scope management, and so on, is that I think the program manager is trying to look at consistency across her or his program. Risk, finance, scope, whatever, doesn't matter. It would make no sense at all for every project to be approaching this in a different way. It would be chaos. Scope is defined differently. Oh, we're not going to use that financial uh, uh, management process. We're going to do something different, of course not. How are schedules being managed? How is scope being defined? How do we make sure that the projects and the program are still valid? So the program manager is, is trying to ensure consistency of approach across the program. The principles, well, we've already looked at principles a little bit, but I think the principles are how we work. Now, clearly, this is how the program manager works, but again, how the projects and any non-project work is being managed across the entire program. Again, if one project is participatory and another project isn't, you'll probably have a problem. At the same time, if the program manager does not work in a way which is participatory, don't be surprised if the project managers in a, also, if you like, copy the behavior of the program manager and they start managing in a non-participatory way as well. OK, so we've got this thing. It's, it's more strategic and we're looking for consistency. Now, I just want to focus on some areas that personally I feel are really important. So they're represented by, by these images. So the first one, the uh, loud hailer or megaphone, is about representation. 
as a program manager, you are probably the face of your program, not just to the outside world, but also internally in your organization. You're going to have to represent, fight for, champion your project managers. Nobody else is going to do that. So this is one way of looking at it. Where, where, do, where do the skills and competencies really matter? Well, it's if no one else is going to do it, it's up to you as the program manager, that's going to be important. So how many times have you, have you, have you got stuck in your career because something wasn't working for, from somewhere else in the organization? Right. Well, now it's, as a program manager, it's your job to fix that. So you're going to have your, you're the, you're both the, the face, but also the voice of your program and the other way around. You're going to be the face and the voice of the organization to your project managers and teams. Okay, moving to the middle. This is the point that I've already mentioned a bit. It's about how is everybody working together? What's the culture across all of the program, all of the projects? How do you work together? Because if you're not working together, if you're not pulling together, then you're pulling apart. So looking at this picture, it's as if somebody is hiding a piece of the puzzle. Not going to be very helpful. And finally, this is a bit t difficult, tough decisions. You are the place where tough decisions come to be solved. You may well be the escalation point for risk management, issue management, change management. It doesn't mean you can solve every problem, but it is about taking tough decisions. And, and sometimes, you know, that means not making everybody happy. And I think it's really important to remember that. So what to do about all of this? Well, here is a checklist that I have developed. It's very subjective. You could add to it, subtract from it. But this is um, my take on some of these issues. So first one, are you directing the orchestra? Are you the conductor? Or are you just playing a role? Because if you're playing a role, you're not performing the role of the program manager. How accessible are you? Who have you helped today? Now, you could say this is true for anybody in any organization, but given what we've already said about skills and capacity, I think this is a really important question. In your program team, who have you helped? What issues are the project managers facing? What might go wrong? Risk management, how can you help? Who needs to learn what? And just as importantly, are they learning it? And this is, again, it's not, this isn't just about you. It's the projects. It's the implementing partners. If there is a skills gap, this will come back to bite you. I guarantee it. What do other people think about you and your style? And, you know, how do you know? This is an interesting one, I think. How often does a team meet? And sometimes I see teams, well, we meet every month, every quarter. I'm a great believer in, in short meetings, but frequent meetings. Apart from anything else, it gives you a chance to get to know people as people. If the only time you ever meet is to talk about a problem, it's really hard to get a, a, a productive culture. And so that's the next question. Well, we talked about the culture in the programme, but what's the culture in the project and how do you know this? Have you seen it or is it just somebody telling you? And then finally, what have you done today to represent your programme, to be the, the, the face and the voice of your programme, to whether it's outside the organisation or inside the organisation? So this is just a, a simple checklist of questions that, that I sort of use to think about my role as a program manager looking at skills and competencies. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Any questions, any thoughts, any observations, please let me know. Many thanks and bye for now.